That morning I was busy ironing my clothes and he closed the front door, locked the front door, said to me that I'm not going anywhere today. After suffering years of emotional and physical abuse, Amishka was raped by her husband. Hers is one of about 40,000 rapes reported each year in South Africa. Lots more are never reported. But the government thinks it's found a way to help get justice for victims. Welcome, this is Kalbrima to the Zeleki Centre. He threw me on the bed and said that he's going to have sex with me right now and I begged him not to do this. I started crying. I didn't shout. I didn't make a noise. I just thought that this is something that I feared all my life. After she was raped, Amishka needed to leave the house. So he put his gun in his shorts and we drove to the beach. And as I was sitting at the beach, I let go. I just started crying. And looking at the waves, I prayed to God that he must give me a way out of this. People are often too frightened to report rape. And if they do report it, they can be asked to repeat the story, making them relive the trauma. But Amishka did report her rape and went to a Tutazela care centre. This is a place where staff are specially trained to deal with victims of sexual violence. The Tutuzela care centres make sure that the rape survivor is physically um, healthy, that if there are wounds that that is being cared for. And then the other component is a forensic examination to gather the necessary evidence that the police and the prosecution service will need when a case goes to trial. There's also psychological support and information about the legal process. This is our counselling room. Um, this is Ntsigi Matole. She's one of the counsellors from Rape Crisis. The first thing that the nurse did was to call me in a separate room. And she said that there's counselling for this and that I'm not alone. The safe space that you get to cry and feel that emotional breakdown at that time is amazing. The support she got there gave her the strength she needed to go ahead with the prosecution. But once she was in court, it was a lot harder than she'd imagined. I sat opposite the perpetrator and his supporters. I was alone. They're looking right at me and they're laughing and to sit right opposite them is so intimidating that you wonder if you're going to go through with this all the way. And eventually she decided she couldn't go through with the trial, so there was never a conviction. More than 90% of reported rapes in South Africa don't result in a conviction. To tackle this, the government has introduced sexual offences courts. With the sexual offences court, you have a court that is dedicated to deal with the sexual offences matters. You have a magistrate, you have a prosecutor, and also the intermediary who's trained to deal with these cases. The court building is designed to make the whole process less intimidating. The victim comes in through a private entrance to avoid meeting the accused. Then they're taken to a waiting area with comfortable sofas, a kitchen, and a children's play area. The testifying can then be done via a video link from a private room. This would have made all the difference for Amishka. Yes, I would have definitely gone through with it. But having a private testifying room helps you as the survivor feel more confident and strong emotionally. The number of cases being prosecuted is still low, but for those cases that do get to court, the government says that conviction rates are improving and a UNICEF survey found that the satisfaction level amongst survivors was 69% in sexual offences courts, compared to 48% in normal courts. It's a homegrown model. Quite proud about it as South Africans, because something that is coming from us. We have a victim who is actually happy at the end to say that I felt justice was done. There are now 55 Tutuzela centres and 94 sexual offences courts with plans to open more.